Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be doing a video that I kind of came up with the idea for in another video, just on the spot, except we're going to be adding a slight twist to it. So instead of using the amount of overtime losses at the trade deadline to determine how many moves we will make, it instead will be our current position in the standings. I'm going to run with Carolina for this challenge, or the bunch of jerks, if you will. Honestly, there's not a good reason for that. I just decided that I'm going to use Carolina. On a side note, I can already feel my brain just melting, so I have no idea why this happens every time I want to record, but I'll probably edit out all the really bad parts anyway, so you don't have to worry about it. I normally never record on Sunday night, so that's probably why I'm also a little bit weird about it right now, because I'm not used to it. That plus five on the first line is absolutely beautiful, and if Best Lines tries to break that up, I'm going to be very upset. Okay, never mind. They kept it. Holy crap, we get a plus five for our first defensive pair too. That is wild. I forgot Brent Burns is a Carolina Hurricane now. The whole offseason has been outrageous. There's been moves left, right, and center, and I am here for it. I also forgot about Patches being a Carolina Hurricane as well. They got Freddie Anderson here, who is 86 overall in this roster. I'm not sure what he is in EA standards, but this one he's 86. Ranta is an 83. We got that plus five on the first line, and the rest of our offense looks very solid defensively. We also got that plus five, and pretty good depth here defensively as well in the bottom four there. Even our first four-man power play as a plus five. And our first power play. I normally never look at specialty teams, I'm gonna be honest. I know it's important, but it's just too much work. I can't be bothered. Also, I'm definitely not adding a disclaimer to every video, but just putting it out there right now, if this is your first time watching this, if you're coming here for some high IQ hockey stuff, you're in the wrong place. I love the sport. I love watching trades and everything like that. I watch a lot of hockey during the season, but I definitely do not know every little detail. I don't pay attention to players' contracts, where they get moved all the time, stuff like that. I have no idea. There's channels that are specifically meant for that kind of thing. This is not one of them. I'm just here to play a video game and hopefully keep you guys entertained. We're three points up in the Metro right now, first in the division. Now we're five points up. Holy crap, Carolina is ripping up the league. At this rate, we're not gonna have to make very many trades. Did I even really go over the rules at the beginning of this? I don't remember, but I did say that our place in the standings is gonna be how many trades we have to make, and I'm not sure if I mentioned or not, but I'm gonna force at least one of the trades to be a blockbuster. Other than that, the other trades I don't really care about. They could be as big or small as I see fit. But at this rate, I don't think we're gonna have to worry about making a large quantity of trades. 35 wins, and we still have another week and a half before the deadline is even here. We're at 38. Are we gonna be at 40 wins heading into the trade deadline? No, we just lost two in a row. Imagine we're in first place. No, we're not. I already know there's two teams above us, at least. We are currently sat in fourth, so I have to make four trades at the trade deadline, with one of them being a quote-unquote blockbuster. Sebastian's lighting it up right now. He's got 65 points in 60 games. Teravainen is right on his tail. He's got 64 in 60 games, and then Svech is almost point a game. He's got 59. He is right there. Patches and Jarvis aren't doing too shabby either. They both got 54. And on that note, let the trade deadline begin. I'm gonna set us to a buyer. I'm going to go ahead and enter the trade deadline. Who's going to be available? Hopefully we get some big names. That is, in fact, a big name. I mean, we could try, but I don't know. I like our first line the way it is. He could play second line center, which is kind of rude to Patrice. I'm going to be real with you. They don't want Patch ready, but for some reason, this is almost fair value. I guess he is three years older. I'm just going to try this one for one. It might happen, and it does. Well, there's our blockbuster out of the way, and speaking of which... Pacioretty's right back on the block for them. What the heck? Goligoski's 83 overall. He's only making 2 million. This could be a very solid defender to add to that depth that is already pretty solid. Why is it trying to retain 2 million? I didn't do that. Wait. No. No! Screw you, Florida. I should just trade to get Pacioretty back. 4.75 isn't that bad of a contract. We could put him in the bottom six. I'm probably gonna spend the whole time getting rid of his retained salary. I probably could have just deleted him and re-added him, and that would have fixed that. Maybe. They want our prospects for the most part. We could get rid of Ryan Suzuki. It doesn't really matter because we're only doing one year anyway. In fact, that trade value is pretty much fair. I think I could try to get something else back as well though. We could go for a hag or maybe I'll just get a draft pick. I'm going to try to add a fourth. I feel like this won't go through anymore, but I'm gonna give it a shot. All right, continue. 
Nice. I feel like I'm kind of done with making the big moves for the most part. I take it back. I'm going to try to make us absolutely insane. This won't work. There's no way they're going to take on Jake Gardner's contract. I'll try adding a second to make it a little bit more appetizing, but I still feel like we're not even going to be close. Asset no long. Okay, well, that answers that. I'm quite shocked by how close this trade value is. Martinook is 79 overall, and then Tanner's 82. Martinook in a fifth? This might work, actually. The value does seem to be there, and they accept it. Carolina Hurricanes legend, Maximus Domi? We don't actually need Brady Shea, because we have enough defensemen to fill up the top six. Although it doesn't benefit us at all, because we're not doing more than one season, I'm going to try to bring back in a third, and they will reject that. They want to get rid of next year's pick, so I'll try a next year's fourth, and he's gone. Are you joking? Florida just keeps putting Spencer Knight on the block, which is absolutely astounding to me. I can't quite remember what our bottom four looked like, but I might try to bring in Zach Sanford to have that grinder on the bottom six for the playoffs. I'm pretty sure Kasha was on our last line, actually. I think it was our fourth line, and he's a sniper, so maybe it would be a good idea to get rid of him, but then we are losing an overall. You know what? I don't care. I'm gonna try it anyway. One for one, Kasha for Sanford, proposed trade, and they said no. I'll add in a seventh round draft pick to make it worth your while, you know? Still no. How absolutely dare they? What if I make it a sixth round? You know, you move up one whole round there. Quite close in value. We're just not that interested in what you're offering. That is so rude to Kasha. I have to get rid of a player because otherwise we're going to have too much in the organization. And they wanted a fourth round pick. So I'm going to try unloading this contract, which again, does literally nothing for us other than just the idea that we did something productive. I feel like they're not going to want to take this contract though. So they're probably still going to say, wow. All right, have fun with Jake Gardner, I guess. I didn't even want to read all that. I just saw what it was, immediately knew there was a bunch of sass, and I got out of there real quick. But Winnipeg stole Spurgeon from us, and they also got Suster in exchange for a first, and Lucius. Could it be Lucius? I suppose it could. Well, it doesn't matter what your name is, Jabroni. We're going to continue. That was the only blockbuster trade. Let's find out how much our lines changed from all the moves that we made. Bergeron is going to be on the first line. No, I'm rejecting that. So we have a 90 overall center on line number two, playing with Bertuzzi and Marty. What is Marty? He's a playmaker. And then we have a two-way forward, power forward. Tanner's a two-way forward. Okay. Oh, he is a sniper. You know what? I'm going to move Natchez down to the fourth line. Or, sorry, third line. You do not deserve the fourth line. Martin, don't listen to me. Kasha, I want you to prove... Who are we even trying to trade with? I can't remember, but prove them wrong anyway. Screw them for saying that they aren't interested in you, even though it was quite fair value. Zatch Sanford will be... <laughs> Yeah, it's Zach. I know. I know. Calm down. So anyway, Zachary will be our fourth line left winger now. Defensively, I think Ethan Bear is going to be the player getting added that wasn't there before. But yeah, we have too many right-handed defensemen. That's a weird problem to have. Still got the plus five, and now we got a plus one on the last pairing, which is splendid. Plus five on the first line. Nothing for line number two, which is unfortunate, but that's all right. We'll live. And in net, nothing changed there. We still got Freddie and Ranta. All right, Carolina, let's keep up the momentum. We were fourth place coming into the trade deadline, made four moves. How will those moves affect our squad? Can we still win the division? I think we most certainly can. And I think we will. We're up on our division by quite a bit, but the Penguins seem to be coming quicker than I thought they would. They are really hot on our tail. Oh, never mind. We sort of made the gap large again. Okay, so we're winning the division for sure. The Broad Street Bullies will be our round one opponents in the playoffs. We ended up with 51 dubs on the season. And how many points did we get? 93 from Seb. What a certified beautician. 107 points would be enough for first in the Metro by 12 points. So yeah, we definitely didn't really have too much of a chase at the end there for the division anyway how about the president's trophy oh man colorado beat us they got 110 had 52 w's on the air i'll take second though that's still very solid in case you were wondering it was the top 16 teams that made it in that's always good when it works out like that seb had 93 tara vinen had 90 and svetch was also point a game he had 82 so our whole first line was point a game you love to see that Great job, guys. Holy crap, I didn't realize Bergeron has 82 as well. He did play 83 games, though, so that's cheating, Pat. Can't count it. Jarvis put up 71. That is crazy. Bertuzzi ended up having 53, and he played 85 games. It's so weird to see that. Marty had 49. Both goalies did quite well. We got a 918, 251 with six shutouts from Freddie, and then we had a 915, 250 with a single shutout from Ranta. The goalie that led the league for wins with 44 is... 
Pavel, and he didn't even have a 900 save percentage. He got an 899. Leonard, on the other hand, had 42 wins, and he put up a 922, 235. So he played phenomenal. Markstrom has a 922 down here as well with a 232. McCard led defenseman with a nice amount of points. Miro put up 64. Fox had 63. Latang 60 and then EK 65 and Shabbat both put up 57. Nate Mack and Cooch, the only two players to break 100 this year. And I'm trying to find out who won the Rocket Richard. It looks like Matthews with 51, but Ovi also has 51, so they might split it. At least I'm pretty sure it gets split. I think that's how it works. Any crazy shooting percentages? Oh, first of all, Sebastian Aho third in the league with 93 points. Not a big deal at all or anything like that. Tara Vinan's right up there as well with 90. Max Jones had the best shooting percentage with 19.7 and then... Jack had a 19.4. Kyle Clifford embarrassed the rest of the league when it comes to penalty minutes with 127. Tom Wilson was the next closest with 91. So Kyle definitely sat in the box quite a bit. Evgeny Dadanov had the best plus minus with plus 31. Mac and Jimmy Superstar both had 30. Kachuk had a plus 29. Same with ADB. Okay, let's see how playoffs go. We got Philadelphia here. As I said, the Broad Street Bullies in round number one. Can we continue our great season in the playoffs? It looks like we can. Off to a very hot start there. They took one from us, but that's all they're going to get. Next up will be the Washington Capitals. I'll sim past the first three games again, and we are up two to one. How will game number four go? Okay, so we have a 2-2 two -two series, aka it is now a best of three. We are up by one in the best of three. Will they push seven? No, they will not. Our conference final opponent is the Toronto Maple Leafs. So we will send the first three games again, and we are up two to one after that. How about game number four? How will this go? Oh, baby. Are we going to be in the Stanley Cup finals? Uh-oh. They beat us. Can they push a game seven, though? They can. Freddie Anderson trying to show that, you know, he is better than David Ayers. He is better than a Zamboni driver. And he wants to take down the Toronto Maple Leafs himself. First period. We have a 3-2 game. Brent Burns, Patty, and Natchez going to score for us. They got one from Matthews. And Will Nye, the hockey guy. I would also like to point out that the shots are only 10-9. to So not a lot of shots. Both goalies getting lit up pretty bad in that first period. How will period number two go? You are kidding me. This guy just broke the cup. Don't let him touch it again. I mean, I'm just assuming that Toronto is going to beat whoever makes it for the West. And that's assuming we don't make it. We have a 5-on-3 power play. If we don't, okay, we don't deserve to win. We had a 5-on-3 and couldn't score. That is absolutely embarrassing. Congratulations, Toronto Maple Leafs. You've earned it. Yeah. Yep. 5-4 loss in game seven. I thought we had it. I was very confident and I think that might have been our downfall. Svech was the first star. He got three points. Wow. Toronto has the St. Louis Blues in the Stanley Cup final. So they swept them. That had to be a sweep. Sebastian had 30 points in 18 playoff games. Tara Vinen had 29 and Svech had 26. That first line really pulled their weight. Patrice, I could argue, did phenomenal as well. He was point a game in the season, point a game in the playoffs, pretty much anyway. Jarvis got 11 points in the playoffs. All right, so we did very well. We did very well. I am proud of the team, but man, I thought we had it. Ranta had to come in at some point and he put up a 969-110 GAA. Holy crap. Despite only playing 18 games, Tara Vinen and Aho were still the top two points for the playoffs. And then we had Svechnikov with 26. So three of the top four are our guys and we still didn't do it. Samsonov killed it in the playoffs. He had a 925 save percentage and a 247 GAA. Let's have a look at the awards here. We pretty much know all the team awards. Individually, Nate Mack gets the Art Ross. As we saw, he also gets the Hart. McCarr gets the Norris. Cooch gets the Lady Bing. Caulfield takes home the Calder. John Tavares gets the Con Smythe. The Vezina goes to Markstrom. And so does the William M. Jennings. Bill Masterton goes to Alexiak. Ludeman gets the Jack Adams. O'Reilly with the Selkie. Nate Mack with the Ted Lindsay. And Ovechkin and Matthews do split the Rocket Richard. St. Louis did get one game. They took one. But Toronto still abolished them. There's your playoff tree. G2 is about to take on BDS in the Rocket League finals here. So I got to watch that. This is perfect time for this to be ending. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have other video ideas, be sure to leave them down below. I appreciate you. I'll see you soon.